All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Silver Wolf Aerospace mod, which is being made by user Silver Wolf. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a fun little selection of parts to go along with the Mark III fuselage system. And they are some pretty interesting parts indeed. So let's jump into the space plane hangar and have a look at what we do get. Now let's just go ahead and turn on our janitor's closet mod filter just leaving on silver wolf aerospace and have a look at our first part here the mark three airliner cockpit and i very much like this thing as it's just an interesting idea to me to have a more commercial well airliner style cockpit in the game and it has a very good look to it with good modeling good texturing i love all the little details on this thing things that you actually see on a real commercial plane it's very interesting to me and all in all a very nice looking part now as for its stats it does require a minimum of two crew members to operate with a max crew capacity of five and also having a built-in data transmitter crew report and 500 electric charge now the next cockpit we have we're gonna actually need to move this thing forward a bit and actually zoom out a little bit more because this one's a big one and it's the mark 3 hypersonic flight deck which is really long really long and yes it's just a nice long very sleek looking designed cockpit meant for well hypersonic flight and again this requires a minimum of two crew members to operate but this time we get one more crew capacity with six total with the built-in data transmitter and crew reports so we don't get that battery that we had in the previous one but still a good useful sleek looking cockpit nonetheless now let's go on to the final of the three cockpits and my personal favorite of the three the mark three supersonic cockpit and this one oh it's nice again it's a much longer cockpit for the nice sleek design but not quite as almost comically long on the other one this one's a lot more reasonable a lot more fun details to it i love the little fins there we again have all the little cool details around the edges and it's just a very nice looking cockpit once more with a minimum of two crew members to operate max of six data transmitter and crew report but what really puts this one over the edge for me and why i love it the most of them all is well if we right click much like the concord of old we can actually lower the nose or bring it up or lower it or bring it back up and there we are i like that i really like this feature as not only is it a cool nod to once again the old concord but it's just very well done now in the cockpit or not in the cockpit in the space plane hangar there's the right word it just kind of happens abruptly but in the world it's much more smooth animation where you actually see this part of the windshield going down into the nose on the interior here you see all the gantries and supports and even the hydraulics that make it all happen it's it's just a very cool, well done animation that I really, really like. And again, it's just a nice nod to the Concorde, and that is fun. Now, let's move on to the next parts here, which are all down in aerodynamic. We have no other parts in any of the other categories besides, of course, cockpits and then in aerodynamics. And uh, actually, I'm going to turn back on squad parts for a moment because we will need a little bit of extra space here in a second. So let's grab a fuel tank and we'll go with this one. Just pop that on there. Turn squad back off back to aerodynamics and take a look at our next part here which is the mark three tail connector and once more it's a really long part but again very fun detailing we have a nice exhaust port in the back there with even the danger hot exhaust warning and this a tail connector is quite a useful part as it is a resource converter taking liquid fuel and air intake and turning it into electric charge it does also have a battery holding 30 electric charge as well as its own built-in air intake to make it all function properly and all in all it's uh, just a pretty cool little part and if we right click here we can open up the APU door which is that tiny little flap right there let's actually oh boy move the camera around a bit more wrong way 
And there. Now we can actually see it. So yes, just a just a nice tiny little APU door. Not much use to it. I mean, maybe you could fit a small little science experiment in there, but uh, there it is. There it is. Now, if you don't want one of these that's quite so long, but you like the resource converter aspect, well, we can pop that off and turn on the Mark III tail connector, which is, well, same name, but this one, smaller. Smaller. Which I... I quite like. I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the really overly long parts, even though that's what I used in my plane later. But uh, yes, again, same stats in here with the resource converter, the built-in electric charge, air intake, and even the tiny little APU door for you to open and close. There we go. Now the rest of the parts and why I brought on this fuel tank are... Well, quite cool. I've always liked the Mark III fuselage. It's a very cool, large design for the planes in this game. And helps you make good shuttles, cargo, uh, well, planes, etc. But I kind of wish it had more of a flat bottom sometimes to make life a little bit easier with placing wings or uh, your landing gear. And these next parts allow you to have that flat bottom. These are wing boxes, and what we can do with them is actually place it radially attached to the belly of the plane, and now look at that, we have a flush straight side to our aircraft and a flat bottom. And we have these in several sizes. We have the smallest one being the 37, we then have the 50 length, which is uh, just a little bit longer than that. We then have the 75, which is about twice the size of the 37. And then finally, we have the Wingbox 100, which is the longest of them all. And uh, yeah, it's just a cool little thing. And also does give you a lot of potential interesting empty space to put in, um, you know, maybe some power converters, science experiments, extra batteries, what have you. And it's just a nice feature to be able to turn the Mark III fuselage into something a bit different. Now the remaining parts that we have here are what allow you to then bring it back from this sort of blocky design to a more flush design so it all matches up and looks aerodynamic. So we have the wing box type A here, which if we pop on the front, if I would have moved this back a little bit more, we'd actually have a perfectly flush aircraft here. But since it's a little bit too far forward, we do still have some gaps. But yes, this is what the last remaining parts do, bringing it back into the main fuselage. Actually, if we put it in the back, I think it might... Oh, hold on, actually. Nope, nope, nope. Still not quite as much. Still some spacing there. But that's why we have different designs. We then have the Type 2A, which we can pop on there. Now, this is a, a longer one, which is not wanting to go to the attachment point. There we are. Just had to get the right angle. A lot longer and more sleeker of one for you to use. Uh, again, for more elongated bits of your plane. We then have the Type B, which if we get the angle on it there, excellent. Not quite as sweeping of an arc, which is very good. We then have the Type B2, if we pop that on. And then finally, we have the Type C, which is the most rounded of them all, and uh, I think my personal favorite of them. I just like the more gradual, gradual curve back into the main fuselage. So that is all quite cool, and I very much do like these wing boxes. You know, they give you a new place so you can put your wings lower down, easier to put landing gear there, and again, some extra space to put some stuff if you so desire. And let's actually head out of the space plane hangar real quick and take a look at the interiors of the three cockpits that we do have. And for that, I've set up this little untitled spacecraft on the runway for us to take a look at all three. Now, at the moment, all of the cockpits are pretty sparse. And why are we taking heat damage? Huh. That's interesting. 
I didn't expect that. But yes, all of them are pretty sparse. The uh, airliner cockpit being the most finished, the hypersonic and supersonic ones are pretty bare, but they're, they are still interiors, which I very much appreciate that we at least have something rather than just a dark void of nothingness. So let's start in the airliner. And uh, there we are, nice view out the window. We have our uh, cockpit in here with some instrumentation. A little bit sparse, but all in all, we do have some things. We got chairs for our Kerbals, and we can move between their various seats. There we are. Now the next is the hypersonic cockpit, which is the, the most bleak of them all, with no instrumentation. Very, well, kind of small windows, but that kind of goes par for the course for the elongated, sleek design of this one. And uh, yeah, we don't even have chairs for our poor Kerbals. They're just floating there somehow but yes still nonetheless it is good to have something rather than nothing and finally we have the hypersonic cockpit which again i'd love seeing all the stuff for the nose bit now these kerbals at least do get some seats which is very very nice of the mod maker um, no instrumentation yet but hopefully all of that will come soon enough and those are the interiors so let us uh, head back to the space center clear off of the runway of them and actually bring out a plane oh god which means i've got to try and fly a plane that i built and we all know we all know how poorly that typically goes now i will say this unlike last week i actually did test this before flying it or well starting up the episode and it flew barely <laughs> Quite literally, I almost touched the ocean at the end, but then was able to get enough lift to actually take off. Uh, yes, this is yet another of my horrible monstrosities that, quite frankly, shouldn't fly, but somehow does, mainly because I put six engines on it to compensate thrust for my lack of lift. I really should have made the wings bigger. That probably would have solved all of my issues, but hey... I, yeah, my planes always suck, so let's just kind of roll with it. But yes, I still do love the look of everything. We have the cool hypersonic cockpit there. We're using the, uh... Bo the wing boxes, there's the name, to actually properly uh, flow into the fuselage body, as you can see there, with no gaps. I do very much like, once you get the right fit on it, it's very good looking. We can even see it in the back here with the more elongated uh, type, I think this one was the type C box, flowing very nicely into the really... <laughs> really long tail connector. I don't know why I picked that tail connector, but I did. So let's actually see if I can take this thing off again. Like I said before, it flew barely. So, <laughs> okay, let's turn on the SAS and fire the engines, take off the brakes, and let's see if we can get it to go. Now, unfortunately, unlike last week when I used Hyper Edit to then drop the thing from the sky, I don't think that worked for this one, purely because I, I have so, so little lift. I don't know why I made my wings this small, but they looked weirdly interesting to me with the fuselage and the cockpit and everything. Okay, it's a little bit squirrely. It wants to go off to the uh, left-hand side there. Let's start trying to get some lift. Oh, boy. Oh, get in the get in the landing gear. We're going down. We're still going down. Oh, I didn't mean to lower the nose, but we lowered the nose. Oh, come on, come on, come on. 44 meters. 45, 46. We did it. <laughs> we did it. I'm going to put the nose back. I don't know why it went down. Does it go down with the landing gear? Huh. I hadn't noticed that before, if that is the case. But, uh, yes. We got this monstrosity to fly. <laughs> poorly. Very, very poorly. But yeah, it's just, I really do love all the parts for these things. We get three new interesting cockpits, some really lovely wing boxes to make your fuselages a bit different from before, give you a bit more area to work with, and all in all, it's just a cool little parts pack. So if you'd like to check this out for yourself, which I would certainly suggest you go and do. You can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this episode. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next one. Hopefully, 
we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.